Hey guys, Bobby Hughes here with Hollow Point Firearms and today I'm back to bring you another gunsmithing video. Um, I have a beautiful old uh, Remington Wood, Woods Master. Uh, it's a 742, model 742. Um, it's got some very int uh, intricate um, checkering in it, almost like a pattern uh, weave checkering. I don't know if you'll be able to see it with the lighting down here, but beautiful checkering. And uh, it actually came in. There's nothing wrong with the gun, per se. Uh, but the front of the stock here, the forend, actually, it's, it's cracked here. And this piece here completely broke off of it, split off of it. And while the owner has searched high and low for a new forend for it, um, he can't find one with the pattern that matches um, with the weaving. Now I haven't looked, <clears throat> I don't know if I could find one for him or not, but I told him not to worry about it, that we're going to fix this one up. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and get started on the teardown here. And uh, um, once I get it, the, uh, the fore end here off, then uh, I will uh, bring you guys back on and show you what I intend to do to get it fixed. All right, so uh, sit tight and we'll get started. All right, guys, so um, I've got the, the forend off here, and uh, these uh, these Remingtons, the, a lot of the gas action is up here in the front of the forend um, to help reduce some of the recoil and uh, the way it functions, and so they get pretty nasty. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean this thing up real good. Now, in this pot, I've got some really hot water. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this brush, put some water in here, just a little bit of water, take some crud cutter, squirt it in here. If I can get it to squirt, there we go. It'll break up some of that grease and oil that's in there. I'm going to put a little bit on the stock here too. And then I'm just going to lay it right over top of that hot water. I got some cheesecloth here to get it hot. Lay it out over this stock and let it set right there for a little bit. That steam is going to actually open the pores up on the wood, which we need to do because we got to clean that groove out inside of that crack. And in order to get in there to clean it out, we need to make sure that it's all opened up. It is going to take a little bit of our finish off, but that's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll put it back on. But basically what this is going to do is it's going to draw out a lot of those oils and resins and uh, open the pores up. Okay, so basically what we've done is is this was the broken piece here. I'm just using it to prop this other piece up right now. But this was the broken piece. This is the original reason why it came in for repair. Um, but underlying where that piece broke off, there was another crack that I showed you guys that ran right down through here. It wasn't this bad. I've actually exact opened it back up. Um, it was a previous repair and it was done poorly and so the glue was actually um, when it was glued the glue ran out and it stuck and there was no clear coat replaced it wasn't ever finished and then clear coated back over so um, in order to get this piece to be strong on this piece this piece has to be strong so what I did was I heated it up heating it up with that hot water what it is opened the pores and it allowed that glue to separate and so as that glue started to separate I used my knife here and just worked my way in there to open it back up now I'm not going to open it all the way down just because the front looks pretty good there I can work with that but this back here definitely needed to be repaired so what I've done is I've opened it back up and then used a brush and that hot water and that um, uh, 
crud cutter and uh, I've cleaned all of this in here up pretty good now it's not perfect but it's clean enough for me to work on it and then I've also used that crud cutter inside of here and removed all that glue and epoxy that they used now this big step here is before we start repairing it is to make sure that this dries out so I'm probably gonna let it dry out for 24 hours or so before I attempt to make any repairs on it and then we'll get into making the repairs after that all right, so I'm uh, just going to leave it, let it set, and I'll be back with you guys once uh, it's all, right, all dried guys, out. so our stock um, has had time, our foreign stock here, has had time to dry for uh, a couple of days now. It's been drying out real good from where we steamed it. And so right now what I'm doing is I'm just taking my time and making sure that I can get this crease back together, make sure that it's all nice and lined up, and uh, so I can see how much field work I'm going to have to do when we get ready to glue this thing back together. All right, now what I'm going to be using to uh, do this stock repair is Acro Glass. This stuff is really good stuff, um, not just for accurizing your rifles, but also for repairs. It dries super hard and it works great as long as you use it in the proper manner and mix it accordingly. You can usually buy Acro Glass on brown ales. Um, for a reasonable price. I think a kit like this would be good if you're going to accurize some rifles. It would be good for two rifles, be enough for two rifles. For this, it should be plenty and we'll have plenty left over. So I like to keep some of this on my shelf here because it works great for stock repairs. So we're going to be using that. Before we start using the Acro Glass, like I said, I want to make sure that I get my, my seam lined up properly. So I'm using some little Erwin Quick Clamps. Um, to line everything up and to keep the back straight here to keep it from folding in I've just I used my uh, my ruler got a good measurement on what the uh, depth is supposed to be or the width and then I cut me a little jig block to put in there to help hold everything nice and square and straight so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and I'm gonna be prepping my Dremel what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use my Dremel tool with a small drill bit and I'm gonna drill some holes down through the top of the broke piece into the actual stock that's still good and we'll fill those full of acro glass as well and create like a concrete post to keep this thing from breaking again so let me finish tightening this thing up here and getting it lined up and then I'll bring you back on and we'll get some holes drilled in it and start mixing our acro glass Alright y'all, so our acro glass is set up now for two and a half days. Um, it's good and solid as far as re repairing that first crack there. Um, you're still going to see a little bit of the crack. Alright, so um, once once the this other piece dries, I'm going to show you guys how what we're going to do to to help uh, kind of blend that crack in. You'll always see it uh, more than likely. It's just it's going to be there, but it's good and strong now. Um, the owner doesn't have to worry about it breaking off again um, but I'm going to do the best I can to uh, repair this checkering and try to, to uh, blend that crack in a little bit better and uh, maybe we can make it make it look uh, a lot better than, than what it does so uh, let me give you guys a close up here it's uh, like I said you can still see the crack pretty good but uh, it's strong man it's good and good and strong there but uh, this is probably the worst spot right here and but I'm gonna try to blend that in a little bit better once this next piece that we're getting ready to put on sets up so uh, first step we want to do in putting this piece on is now the other day when we filled when we did our acro glass um, I pushed it down in these holes 
to help make like a post. We drilled through this this broke piece into the other stock to sort of make like an acre glass post. Um, of course, it's going to shrink up and it's not going to fill the post completely. So what I've done is I've laid our next piece, and we don't want to drill down through the top of this piece because it'll be exposed. You'll be able to see it. So what I've done is I've just kind of lined it up, and I've marked the the broken piece lined up with the post holes from the bottom. And what I'm going to do is just simply flip it over and try to line up the hole the best I can. It's not going to be a whole lot because we don't have a whole lot of meat uh, to work with here. So we're just barely going to cut into it. But it should still add uh, a little bit of support to it to help hold that piece back on there again. Alright guys, so our stock that we uh, that we we put our second uh, section of, of uh, acro glass on here to put this second piece back on. And now what I'm doing is I'm just sanding it down. We're going to end up refinishing this whole stock, this whole forend anyway. The, uh, the stock itself won't get refinished, but we're going to redo this forend. Our goal here is to make everything float out. Like I said before, I mentioned it before. You'll always be able to see that crack that's in this stock, but the idea is to see it and not be able to feel it. Right now we've got a little raised edge. We've got a little raised edge here from this break because it was so bad. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and sand this off. All right, I'm going to get it get it good and uh, flush, and then we'll mix up one more batch of acker glass, and whatever gap is left from the crack, we'll go ahead and fill that gap in. Let it set for two and a half more days. And uh, then we'll continue to finish the whole, the finish the stock off, and we'll go from there. So I'm just going to take some time now and sand. A little trick for you whenever you're doing any type of sanding like this: get your little block of wood, wrap your sandpaper in it. I'm going to start with 150 grit, and then I'm going to go to 220 grit. And then once I get uh, the next coat of acro glass in there and it hardens up, I'll start with 220 grit and go to 400 grit and do a nice, clean, uh, smooth sand on it. So just wrap it in a block and wrap your sandpaper or wrap your block in a piece of sandpaper and that lets you see where your high spots are because it keeps the paper nice and flush. You're not going to get round spots in it from your fingertips from doing this. Use a block of wood and it will keep everything nice and smooth. Alright guys, so our acro glass has set up now for about six days on uh, on our final coat that we put on of the acro glass on our crack to just fill in the gaps that were left over to give us a nice smooth finish. Now I've repeated the sanding process again using uh, 150 grit sandpaper with a, with a sanding block and then I finished off with 220 grit sandpaper and finished everything off. So now what I want to do is just wipe off as much of the dust or blow off as much of the dust as you can. And then we're going to take some uh, cold water on a rag. And we're just going to wipe the stock down with the cold water. And that's going to pull any of the sawdust particles that are left from sanding off of the wood and give us kind of an idea of what our finish is going to look like once we get it on. Water is a great way to determine what color you're going to get 
when you finish your wood. So go ahead and get all that sawdust off of there. We don't want any sawdust in our finish. So we want to get all the sawdust off of the off of the stock here. Alright, now what I'll go ahead and do is use my, my heat gun and go ahead and dry the wood. And what this will do is it's a rapid heating process. It'll raise any hairs that are in the wood, in the grain. It'll raise them up so that we can fill them. And if they exist, if they're there, then we can sand them off. Now, just like any other stock finishing uh, process that I, you've seen on my YouTube channel, I'm using just Minwax wood finish. Uh, in this case, I've chosen to use a golden pecan or pecan or however you want to say it. Be sure and give your uh, wax, flip it upside down and give it a good shake. Um, or I'm sorry, your finish, give it a good shake. Let all the sediment that's in the bottom come to the surface. And in this process, I've, in other processes, I've used brushes and things. This process, I'm going to be using a square of, um, of cheesecloth. And I've just folded it up here, and that's what I'm going to be using to, to put my, apply my finish. So I'm just going to soak my cheesecloth in the finish. And then I'm going to start at the bottom, as always, and work my way to the top. Alright, so I just finished up my third coat of finish here. And so now what I'm going to do is take a dry piece of cheesecloth and make one pass right down all three sides. And what that's going to do is it's going to take off any of the color that has it soaked into the grains. That way we don't get any runs or bubbles in our finish. And that looks pretty good. So now the waiting game begins. We have to let this dry for about 24 hours now and uh, then we'll continue after that. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on a hanger and hang it up and let it dry. Alright guys, so it's been 24 hours now. Our stock has had time for the color to dry and uh, at this point I have uh, I have taken the uh, well, I got a thread in here I need to get out of there and drive me nuts. There we go. So I've taken the uh, taken the tape off the front here on the ebony part of the stock. I've taken that off, and I've also used some four aught steel wool, and I've rubbed it. I've rubbed it real good with the four aught. Now that's going to do two things. Uh, it's going to take off the uh, the roughness of any stain that set on top of the wood, and it's also going to knock off any burrs or anything that may have uh, have risen up during the drying process off of the wood and it should leave it nice and slick which is what we want. The third thing it does is it helps pull some of the new color out of the stock so that it matches the wear of the old stock uh, of the butt stock that's still on the gun. I tried to get the customer to let me just refinish the butt stock too and he didn't want to do that. He wanted to just do the forehand so it's hard to get it to match perfect whenever you're doing a a color on the one and not the other but we're going to try to make it work the best we can so that's a good way to do it to pull some of the color out so now we're going to move on to the first step of our of our sealing process and we're going to be using Birchwood Casey's True Wool alright now uh, I've showed you guys uh, I've done videos on True Wool before in stock finishing so if you want to see a really in-depth stock finish um, the finishing part then uh, go ahead and check that out um, I'm not going to walk you guys through the steps of all of this just simply because I already have this content content on my channel. Um, so uh, if you go back to the 1906 project and the gunsmithing videos, you'll see stock work videos. 
and those are going to take you through the steps that and the H&R project. I did them on both. So it's going to take you through the whole process of completely refinishing this. So I'm going to put probably about three to four coats, maybe five, six coats of true wool on my uh, forend and uh, then I'm going to go ahead and match it to the stock and in between each coat, each coat uh, I'll use my 4 out steel wool and kind of buff it off, wipe it off with a tack cloth and just continue the process. And then at the end we'll polish it up and reinstall it. So once I get it reinstalled I'll bring you guys back on and show you the finished product. Alright guys so I just got the uh, Woodsmaster uh, model 742 uh, back together, the one that we did the stock repair on. Uh, this one actually came in for a cleaning, scope uh, scope mounting, and the stock repair. So I've got it all back together now, and I just wanted to show you guys the finished product, um, the stock. And uh, you can see we matched them up pretty good here. There's a, you know, a little bit of difference. Like I said, I wanted to uh, refinish the buttstock too. Uh, the guy didn't want to refinish it. He just wanted to uh, fix the forend. So I tried to match it the best I could, and you can see it matched, it matched pretty good. Um, obviously this is going to look newer because it is newer. It's got a clear coat on it, or a new clear coat on it, and everything was sanded down. So the, uh, the ivory and the ebony and all that has a nice new coat of clear on it. So you can, you can tell the difference, but I think overall it matched up pretty good. But I just want to show you guys a close-up of the repair so you can see it here. Um, you know, like I mentioned before, you'll always be able to see the crack. You know, it'll always be there. But the important thing here is that it's nice and smooth, and it almost looks like wood grain. It blended so well. So uh, you can see right there is where the start of the crack was, but that's all nice and smooth now, and uh, it ran all the way up. Um, so yeah, it turned out really good, I think. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, it's a very in-detail, uh, in-depth process to do a um, stock repair like this. It's, they're, uh, you know, but they're pretty common is the thing. And uh, I don't know, you know, how many gunsmiths out there can actually do it anymore because a lot of gunsmiths these days are uh, accessory bolt-on guys. And, you know, if you are a, a true gunsmith and you do you know, wood stock repairs and things like that. No punt towards you. Um, you know, no punt towards the uh, the gunsmiths that do the bolt-ons and stuff like that either. Um, I'm just saying it's harder to find uh, people that can actually do uh, good woodworking and, and stock repairs. So uh, this one is going to last a long time now, and uh, I'm sure that my friend will be happy with it. So uh, anyway, guys, that's the process. If you have any questions or comments or uh, you know, any, uh, about the materials that I used or the process or why I did what I did when I did it and things like that, then feel free to leave comments below. Um, let me know what you think. If you think I did a good job or a bad job on it, uh, everybody's entitled to their opinion. And uh, go ahead and rate the video for me. Uh, this was a pretty long video, so it definitely, uh, definitely takes time to do these. So uh, anyway, and if you're interested in this kind of stuff, um, go back, check out my channel. Um, see what I've got on there, combination of prepping and, and ammo reloading and gunsmithing and things like that and uh, see if you like it and if you do, consider subscribing. I love subscribers, um, you know, especially my subscriber base, definitely a good base of subscribers. Uh, you guys are very supportive and I uh, appreciate that. So uh, until the next video, get out there, shoot some guns, be safe and most importantly, have fun. See you guys later.